Hey, sorry about that, guys. Um, unfortunately, the camera cut out on me because, unfortunately, I can't really record everything for over an hour, so I'm going to have to do a part two of this now. The fourth video, I had to do part two of today. When the other eight videos I did, I only had to do one part, thank God, but the other ones, I had to do two parts. Actually, no, four parts. Four parts for each, which sucked ass. But, hey, it is what it is. Let's move that fine. So, <laughs> Yeah, like I said before, the two sisters were arguing bigger and Celestia and Luna because they didn't bring a big enough gift for Cranky Noodle and Matilda for their, you know, beautiful wedding ceremony day. And Spike, he just throws his gift out the door and just starts laughing. And then out of nowhere, finally, um, <laughs> you can see all the little, like, firework flowers are about to take off. But before that, you know, the doctor are all nervous. Oh, and then we even seeing, like, um, Doctor Who. AKA, you know, Doctor Who's time turner, he goes to see Derpy, like, I couldn't get my tailor suit made in time, so I wore this fat seal scarf, so what do you think? Derpy, how do I look, Miss Muffins? And do I look fancy enough? And then she says, you look like a million bucks. <laughs> That's real cute, that was adorable. I like how they did that, so. The boyfriend and girlfriend thing isn't confirmed, because you know, they didn't kiss, so, um, yeah, they're probably just still just friends, but obviously the Brony and Peg Sister fandom community there, especially with the fanfic community, there's going to be a lot more fanfics of them now that both of them are kind of like dating, but they really don't say that they are, because she's just hugging him. She's not kissing him. It would have been different if she kissed him. Then it would have been officially confirmed, so unfortunately it's not canon yet. But their friendship is canon, obviously. And then they show, they make amends to like Lyra. She's still really pissed the hell off at Bomb Mouth for not telling her about her secret identity and then she ends up telling the rest of Pony it's okay Ponyville the bugbear is the main six have defeated the bugbear and everyone's like real happy they're rejoicing like yay you know how they normally do and um after that yeah um Lyra finally gets to um or Bon Bon apologizes to Lyra not telling her about her secret identity and then she's out there crossing her legs like <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> And you know I ate all those freshly golden oats just for me. And I ate all of them. And then she's like, uh, it's so funny to share a secret with a best friend that you're so enthralled and excited about. And she's like, oh, I'm just quite happy. You're my best friend in the world. Me too. And they both hug each other and are happy, you know. So once again, I got to say it before. I can't stress this enough. I said it before. I'll say it again for a fifth time. Um, all the people that wanted them to both be with each other sexually it's still not canon it's official they're only a friendship thing just friendships just friends so uh, i know i probably pissed off a couple people they probably wanted to see it officially confirmed but you know you got to realize you got to remember the original target demographic for the show were little girls and kids in general they didn't know the whole brony thing that teenagers adults even a couple old people be really into this um um, TV series like they thought they were obviously thanks to 4chan and YouTube obviously <clears throat> and I think Reddit too I'm going to play the part too um, so yeah <clears throat> you got to you gotta remember that people you have to <clears throat> um, after that what happens is, is that um, after everyone sits down everyone's real comfortable and then uh, Mayor Mayor I'm just saying is everyone ready at the chapel town hall and then, like, you can see the main six all the way in the background. They're about to run. They're running really fast because they really don't want to be late for the wedding. They want to be there to see the whole thing go off after them kicking the crap out of that bugbear monster that was terrorizing Ponyville. They're, like, two inches away, and they go, tsh, 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 and then you can see them, and then Derpy tsh, just slams the door in their face. Like, yep, everyone's A-OK. -okay. Everyone is present. <laughs> she still does her Derpy thing. Thank God they didn't take that away um and after that like mayor mayor and i know i heard a lot of other people that were bronies in the bronalysis thing or pegasus analysis they were speculating and they were talking about discussing how um that whole speech mayor mayor was giving that she was saying every brony comes from every walks of life no matter what 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 um no matter what pony or character the no matter what pony or character that that person loves how important, how less important, how more important this pony is, how like certain characters and certain stories end up being very like less known. They're actually very well known and they're beloved to 
a certain group of pony individuals that everyone has respect for and we can love and cherish these moments for the rest of our lives. You know, she pretty much, in a way, and I heard a lot of people saying that that was the way of the producers and the writers and the storyboard people thanking all the people that are Brony fans or Pekka Sister fans of the TV series, whether they're Bronies or Pekka Sisters or they're just fans of the show in general. It's kind of a way thanks of saying, of all of them saying thank you to us, like me and three, four million other people are fans of this series or this franchise or community of making this show one of the most successful, biggest, one of the most ginormous fan bases ever in the history of the world, almost. I wouldn't say that, but you get where I'm going with this. It's pretty much a big thank you for everyone for liking their show, talking about it on YouTube, tweeting about it on Facebook, going on Twitter and posting it, or on Instagram, DeviantArt, making art for them, making stories for them, making music for them, and uh, making even little micro-comic dubs for them, you know? So in a way, when I heard that, I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's a very deep, sweet, um, very serenaded type of thing that they would say about the bronies like myself, you know, it's insane. And it was really awesome, too. I, I couldn't have been more happy to hear that. And then she ends up saying, do you, do you, Cranky Noodle, take Matilda to be your waffy with her wife? <clears throat> and he says, you bet I do. And then he, she ends up telling Matilda, and do you, Matilda, take Cranky Noodle to be your lofty wedded husband? And she starts crying a whole bunch of tears. She starts bawling out of nowhere. She's like, I do. I do love him. And then after that, and then he, she ends up saying something really funny. I guess this is the male and female um, terminologies for donkeys or burros. Um, she ends up saying that, then now, I, then now I officially pronounce you Jack and Jenny. So I guess Jennies are like female versions of like donkeys, I guess. I don't know. And of course, Jacks, obviously, that's like, that's a term for males, which is donkeys or jackasses. But that's different because sometimes that's normally used to use to insult someone. Not really in a positive way, more in a negative way. And uh, yeah, they both kiss and everyone's happy. And then the flight fire flowers just burst the hell out of nowhere. And then Dr. Dr. Who's, he ends up finding out that, or time turn, or whatever you want to call him, says, he ends up saying, oh man, like, please, for the love of Celestia, please let these experiments work out into their order. And then um, he's thinking about it, and everyone's real happy, they're excited and everything. Oh, I forgot to mention, they show a lot of the side characters, like Bolt Biceps, Sakura, Pipsqueak, um, Button Mash, and um, Cloud Kicker, Cloud Chaser. They didn't really show them at all until almost the end of the episode. So that was cool. Um... And then they showed Luna and Celestia holding hands because they really love each other. You know, holding hoofs, not hands. Psh, whatever. Um, yeah, that's what happens. Well, that's what goes down. And then what happens is um, the fire flower works. They end up, like, um, exploding out in the middle of nowhere. And I remember Derpy ends up saying, They're so pretty. They're awesome. <laughs> Funny little speech I'm finding at that time that I ended up giving her. But still pissed me off a little bit. It doesn't mean I'm happy about it. Um, it's funny, but it still pissed me off a little bit. But anyways, um, after that, what happened was that they all exploded out in the middle of nowhere. It's like, of course, love is what ignites these fire flowers into exploding. How did I not see it before? And then they, he's, he's, he's like shaking this girl's head. And it's not just any pony, female mare pony's head. It's Primrose, the one that's supposed to be, I guess, in the show Doctor Who or whatever, the BBC show. Um, it's supposed to be like his girlfriend or fiance, wife or whatever. I don't know. So I know a lot of Doctor Who fans must have been fanboying and fangirling the hell out when they saw that little scene right there. <laughs> and then last but not least, they end up showing the main six. Everyone celebrating after that. Then they zoom into the main six. And then they actually show Twilight. Um, she zooms out of the camera. They zoom into the camera. And you can see the little tents that they have for Princess Celestia there, which I never noticed until now. It's so weird. I just noticed it. Not at the beginning of the episode, all the way at the end. It took me that long to even realize that they were there. And then they show Twilight says, You know, girls, I'm so happy. We are so lucky to live in this town. I love you all. And then after that, um, Rainbow Dash ends up like complaining. It's like, Ow, hey. Hey, Twilight. 
careful of that spot. That's where the bear bug, bear bug stung me. That was really funny right there. I, I'll admit, that was a funny joke she made there. Now we get to the overall thoughts, views, and opinions. Um, and this episode is a very long episode. Obviously, this episode was extremely overhyped. For me, I feel like it was overhyped. The, necess the necessity for an overhypeness of this episode was very necessary, and it lived up to its expectations. Like I said, there were a few um, pet peeves that I have with it. You know, with Vinyl Scratch not having a voice actress, or um, Derpy Who's kind of sounding like not the way that I wanted her to be. I really wish Adrian Lima would have played her because I felt like she would have did more justice of her doing the voiceover instead of Sap Saint Germain. I mean, I still love her when she does Rarity and um, Princess Luna voices, but. I just wish she would have did it better, you know? Instead of make her sound like some cookie monster that has a speech impediment, you know? She kind of sounded like Boo a little bit for Monsters, Inc. And she sounded like a couple like a couple other characters for some reason. Some other cartoon characters I've heard before that had that same type of, um... What's it called? What's the word? Voice acting? Something like... Sound like more like pre, pre, preschool kindergarten cartoons like Clifford or Dragon Tales... Or even like stuff from um, way back, like the Puzzle Place, Reading Rainbow, um, Arthur, kind of like that old school, mid late '90s, early 2000s, preschool, kindergarten kind of thing. Or Dora the Explorer, she almost sounded like too, which is weird. I, I don't know if I can see Derpy as Dora the Explorer. I don't know. Um, the other pet piece I kind of had an issue with is that um, I really wish they would have shown every single like background character better but they can only do so much you know I, I really want to see more what that gummy's thinking man that one threw me for a loop I did not even see that coming at all um another thing I really didn't like unfortunately about this episode on pet peeve right now was um I really wish they would have did this that they um they would have brought like somebody like um Golden Harvest aka Carrot Top I, wish she, I really wish she would have been in there along with um, another background voice. I'm trying to remember her name. Like, I know they showed Barry Punch, but I wish they would have gave her more time, like on the spot, to do actual things. Trixie would have been funny to have her return. I really wish Queen Trishless would have been there since the Changeling was there by himself. He must have felt so weird being there because not too long ago he was the enemy of um, Ponyville. Now he's one of the friends. And so... My question is this, how in the world is he, like, even surviving, like, in Ponyville whatnot, without stealing the life force of love from other ponies? This is the thing that's weird about it. Oh, I forgot to mention Shiny Armor and Cadence were in this episode. Shiny Armor, he kept crying like a freaking baby bitch, man, literally. He just cried like a little girl when he, um, was seeing on emotional weddings. And then Cadence ends up saying, it's okay, he always gets emotional weddings like this. It's true, it's true, I hate it. <laughs> that was actually real funny. I like that right there. You know, I'm not a big fan of Shining Armor, but still, it's decent. Um, yeah, that was my pet peeves with it. The, I mean, the writing, I felt like, was pretty damn solid. The storytelling was really amazing. I felt like a lot of the fan service was definitely really, really overachieved in this thing. It, it went above and beyond. To try to like um, please a lot of the people that are brilliant content creators, people that do videos about them like myself, and thousands if not millions of others around the world almost in a way. Um, let's see. Um, the continuity was definitely there. There was a lot of emotional like um, you know, heartstrings that were really they were really pulling my heartstrings really hard, man. And then there were other times, you know, I, I laughed a couple times every now and then. There was a lot of times I was just surprised. My head, not my head, my, my jaw was just open. Like, what, did that seriously just happen? Are you kidding me right now? But in a good way. Uh, like I said before, now let's get to the pros. I love the freaking design. Cora, Cora de Kotachi, I think that's what her name was. Cora Kotachi. You are awesome. You're definitely an amazing woman for making that, um design of the bear bug because like I said before and some of you Pokemon fans might may or may not agree with me it still looks like a Pokemon fusion between how Beedrill and a Pangora will look like I'm just saying that was awesome and um I did get my wish I was hoping that they were going to show the monster that they were fighting 
They showed it and they delivered. And I really love how they did that. Mm, they showed Pipsqueak and a couple other, you know, side cameo characters that they would have showed in other previous My Little Pony um, episodes. What else? Um, there wasn't really no song or anything. The only thing they ever had closest to a song was that whole, you know, dubstep um, orchestrated, like, violinist, professional fancy music with um, Octavia Melody and Vinyl Scratch or Vinyl Scratch when they were making that music together. So there are probably going to be a lot of remixes to that thing in the coming days to come. And uh, one final other thing. It's funny that they brought the Lebowski brothers back. I really wish it would have been the actual, you know, Jeff Bridges and John Goodman that were going to do the voiceovers for them. But unfortunately, we didn't get that. So, um, you know what? I'll digress. I'm cool. They even showed the other um, pony that was in that King Mark Crusaders episode that had the long pink mane here. She was still there. Um, I wish they would have had Trigger there, too, even though she's still kind of a new character in a way. So, that would have been cool to see her, but I feel like it would have been too early, too. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm surprised Discord wasn't in this episode at all. He must have been doing something completely different or whatever. Um, I felt like his comedic slapstick would have been cool if we would have seen him there. I'm not, not a big fan of Discord at all, but still. It would have been funny to see John Delancey, you know, work his magic on the troll of the Equestrian Universe. Anyways, um, other than that, that's all I really have to say about this whole giant episode. It's probably been over 20 minutes on this video alone. I can't believe I actually literally spent a whole entire hour, hour and a half almost, on them just doing this review. But I felt like it had to be dealt with, and I felt like I executed it in the most professionalism and um, the greatest way I could possible. And um, like I said before, the link to my reaction will be in the description box either below or any invitation that you saw earlier. Link to the first part of this video is going to be here as well. Since I already ran out of room and I'm in my music gig, I've probably got like 30-40% of um, camera life left. So um, i got to charge my smartphone pretty soon. It's been acting up weird. Hopefully the battery doesn't burn on it. I really don't want that to happen. And uh, oh, also link to the wiki uh, and the episode in the description box below as well if you missed it. Or it might be an annotation like you saw earlier. And that's pretty much it. So uh, until we get um, Princess Spike and those two, Princess Spike and um, Party Poop, I'm probably not going to be able to do a reaction to those until early July. Because like I said before, I'll be taking care of a certain individual starting tomorrow afternoon because... Um, I still get to work for like four hours. I already talked to him about the boss, he's cool. So um, I already got like 40 videos already backed up for you guys. So there'll be an upload schedule thing while I'm gone, taking care of one of my family members, which I'm not gonna say who it is because it's extremely private, personal. And yeah, this episode, badass. I give it a name minus, nine out of 10, IGN rating. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, um, E3 and everything, um, I still be able to do EA, the reaction for EA, for Ubisoft, for Microsoft Xbox One, even though I hate the hell out of that freaking um, console and their games. And for Sony PS4, when they do their conference, the Nintendo one and Square Onyx, I'm not going to be able to do. That's going to have to, I'm going to have to do reaction out in July because I'm going to be gone. And where I'm going, there is no internet. I mean, there is internet on my phone, but it's really crap and slow. And I'm not going to be able to watch videos at all there. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to see a pre-recording of the Nintendo digital event, and I'm still gonna have to see um, the Square Onyx like pre-show digital event or something. When it's um, unfortunately it's not gonna be live, it's gonna be pre-recorded, so experience might not be as the same, but I'll still be able to react to it anyways. I give my overall thoughts, views, and opinions on it uh, while I'm doing it. So. Peace out once again, Rose Woman, Bronze and So I will see when I see you guys. Good day, good night, whatever you're in the world. Don't drink smoke weed at the same time. Tell them they rock this. Keep it calm, keep it cool, keep it chill, keep it collective out there. And until then, next time, guys, peace out, ladies, goodbye. Stay tuned, more videos coming soon. Brand new videos on this channel almost every single day or randomized. And until then, next time, guys, peace out. Um, stay, stay, safe in the grind, stay healthy, all that good stuff. Be easy, be you, do you do yourself. And until then, next time, guys, I'm out, Lace Sour Crowd. I'll talk to you guys soon. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more future content on this channel and look out for more updates. Take it easy. Goodbye. See you guys soon. I'm out of here and take care, everyone.